Am I audible? Yes. Can you see us? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. So, uh, Miss Ayushi, before we start, tell us where are you speaking from? Sir, I am speaking from my home uh, in Gwalior, Madhya Pradesh. In Gwalior, Madhya Pradesh. Okay. Well, congratulations. You made it in your first attempt. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Usually the first attempt is the best attempt. So you should be very hopeful that you will make it. Yes, sir. I am hopeful. Now, let's start. Just tell us something about yourself. Uh, sirs, my name is Ayushi Bansal. I come from Gwalior, Madhya Pradesh. I did my 10th standard from Gwalior, Kamal Convent School. Post that, I did my 12th from Delhi Public School, Akipuram, New Delhi. After that, I graduated from IIT Kanpur in Electrical Engineering as the best graduating all-rounder gold medalist. Uh, post that, I also worked at McKinsey for around 10 months, where I got the opportunity to work as a consultant in three diverse industries of banking, mining, and port sector. After that, I started uh, preparing for my civil services. And as we discussed, sir, this is overall my first attempt. You also worked in Goldman Sachs. Yes, sir. I did an internship uh, during my third year. Sir. Oh, that was an internship because I was wondering why yes, only sir. two months. Yes, sir. <coughs> A very uh, exemplary academic career. And Thank you, working with uh, McKinsey didn't give you confidence to continue working in, uh, in, in this field? <coughs> Sir so McKinsey uh, actually gave me a lot of confidence uh, to continue working in that field. But even much more than that, it gave me the motivation to shift from there and uh, move towards civil services. Uh, during my IIT Kanpur, I took up some leadership positions. And in McKinsey, I got a chance to do an implementation project. Uh, two out of three projects were based on implementation. All of these experiences gave me the idea, gave me the motivation to pursue civil services, especially in the social and governance sectors. What were these projects? Uh, so my first project was in the banking sector where I was working on their corporate banking part, especially how to digitize their entire trade segment. Uh, so then I worked on a mining project where my task was to ensure that daily day to day targets of mining a particular metal was met. And then, sir, I also worked uh, with a client in the port sector. It was an iron and steel client. We have to select the best port for them based on pricing, which was uh, best for them to export their products. Well, all these experiences have nothing to do with administration. Sir, they may not have a direct <coughs> linkage with administration, sir. But uh, overall, the experience has a lot to do with administration, sir. Firstly, uh, it was a direct client-focused approach, sir. Uh, we, I every day interacted with clients and that told me that I enjoy public interaction and working directly amongst public a lot. Secondly, sir, as we discussed, it two, of, two out of the three were based on direct implementation, sir, which would be a very natural course of my career in starting in the administration, sir. So those two things are very much related. <coughs> you know, in administration, you'll have to work with the public. It's not a one-on-one -on -one to one or one-on-one -on -one, uh, experience that you already had. That's a, different, different, that's a totally different cup of tea. Are you confident? Yes, sir. I'm definitely confident that I will be able to handle those, sir. Okay, and not I'll, just... I'll give you a situation. Yes. Now, you are district magistrate. And uh, there is a group of people of a particular community who come to you that uh, we want to uh, take a religious procession through a particular route. Now you are aware, you know that this route in the past uh, has uh, been a source of communal tension. The other community will definitely object to it. So would you, what would you do? There's a delegation which comes, listen, it's a religious festival, we go along this route every year. Please give us permission. What would you do? Sir, uh, in this particular case, uh, there are different uh, things which are at competition with each other. Uh, the religious group has the fundamental right to take out demonstration as their right to religious freedom. So would you allow them? On the other hand, would you allow sorry, them? Would you allow uh, them to go? 
Uh, sir, I would... Uh, so depending on the situation, uh, because I understand that that particular area is prone to communal tension, yes. uh, my would I would I would uh, detest from allowing them, sir, uh, because uh, public order and public interest uh, are reasonable restrictions on their fundamental rights, sir. I would request them that they can take out their procession, but at a different route, uh, which is safer, which is not prone to communal tensions. If with, they disagree, uh, uh, if they disagree. Sir, if they disagree, I will try to reason with them, especially their community leaders. And I will try to ask them that uh, if they take the core purpose of taking out the procession uh, is to exhibit their religiosity, which can definitely be exhibited in different paths as well, sir. Uh, so I would allow them, I would engage with them to give them a different path in the city where they can take out their procession, sir. Miss Ayeshu, they will tell you maintenance of law and order is your problem. It is our fundamental right, please allow. If you fear tension, then please make bandobast. How would you react to that? Yes, sir, I understand that uh, I am accountable and I am responsible for maintaining the law and order of the city, sir. But uh, maintaining peace in the entire city is the responsibility of each and every citizen. Uh, so, sir, I will request them. I will uh, engage with them and in initiate a dialogue with them so that we can meaningfully try to see that if they are able to shift uh, their processions. And my, my course of action would be towards dialogue and engagements. Yeah, but you will not allow them the route that they have come to you for. Uh, no, sir. My choice of action would not be to, would okay. be to not allow them. Sir. Okay. You are uh, fond of watching Hindi cinema on social issues. Yes, sir. Tell us some of the social issues that India is uh, struggling with. Sir, uh, India is a very diverse country. Uh, in different regions, in different communities, we have diverse social issues. So one common social issue which I see is patriarchy, sir, and gender discrimination, for which our government is taking multiple steps. Sir, another uh, social issue would be sir, related to caste system. We have come a long way from our past where caste discrimination uh, was very much per pervasive but today sir it still exists to some extent we still hear cases of atrocities against scheduled caste and even scheduled tribes sir. Uh, so these two social issues and sir lastly uh, though we have come though we have come a lot out of poverty sir still a large section in absolute numbers still remains below poverty line and especially in terms of multi-dimensional poverty sir we see that particular groups are more uh, disadvantaged so these social issues still uh, pervade India. Sir. Under the multi-dimensional poverty, uh, what is the what are the numbers of uh, Indians who are poor, who are in poverty? Are you referring to the UNDP report? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, I uh, sir, I'm sorry, sir. I don't remember the exact oh, numbers. This is, it is the UNDP which came up with this uh, UN with yes. this. Uh, multi-dimensional poverty figure and that's the yes. only uh, record that we have at the moment yes. considering because we don't have consumption and uh, expenditure uh, figures from the government they withheld them so uh, how many still in poverty i'm sorry sir i don't remember the exact numbers 400 million plus okay, sir. but that's at a particular point of time you know things may be very different from now Yes. You know, there's a debate going on, uh, I don't know whether you have been uh, in touch with this debate, that one group of people say, well, poverty uh, was, had, had gone up only marginally during COVID. Another group says, no, that's not the case, it went up quite high and remains high at the, at the present. Which uh, side are you on? So there are two aspects to this. Uh, sir, first one, if we have to uh, see on an overall uh, India, our countrywide basis, sir, I would detest, I would uh, not take a particular side, sir, because it has to be based on evidence. And we have data coming from both the sides. Uh, some say it is high, some say it is low. So the second aspect would be based on my personal observation, sir. Uh, during COVID, I've witnessed a number of people lost their jobs. A oh, number that, of is, people that will be a very microscopic view. Yes. You're talking now. In the absence of uh, data, um, 
poverty uh, experts are relying on private data. What is the, this private data? Where, what is the source of this data? I would say non-government data. So there are uh, many NGOs and many centers who are releasing such data, sir. For example, Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. That's one. Yes, that's sir. one. That's one. Yes, sir. Any other? So there is an NGO by the name Oxfam. Uh, it releases data on these aspects, sir, on inequality, on poverty, and so that only so. estimates along many many parameters. Yes, sir. But data, the basic data coming from uh, Center for Monitoring, yes, another source. Sorry, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Mr. Ayushi Bansal. Yes. You are a business analyst. Yes. The port business you analyzed, what did you do there? Sir, uh, in that we analyzed different ports, sir, and we tried to calculate the charges of different ports for our particular client who was exporting in large volume. So, sir, different kind of charges, for example, pilot aid charges or cargo handling charges and so on. We analyzed for different ports and we saw which port would cost the least to our client and we uh, suggested that. But this, they could have found out it by sending a person there or even on the internet. Uh, sir, uh, sir, in, in determining the charges, uh, a lot of uh, things are applicable, sir, for uh, the charges are come, charges are time differ for different kinds of clients, sir. Then, uh, even within a single port, there are different terminals. Some are PPP terminals, some are purely private terminals, and so on, sir. The so charges would again a, differ. It's a collecting inform, collect, collection of information rather than analysis of it. Sir, uh, there was analysis as well. Sir, we engaged with uh, different vendors and tried to see if we can reduce the cost at times. Sir, we negotiated with ports as well to a certain extent, sir. We got different quotations and not just, sir, Indian ports. We analyzed global ports that, sir. We also brought in a lot of expert opinion to see uh, if if there are other ways we could analyze this and try to reduce charges, sir. So apart from information analysis was also involved. Okay, good. Uh, kindly give me the landmarks in the social development in India. Developments in the society. Sir, Indian society is La very Sorry, important. landmarks after independence. Okay, sir. <clears throat> sir, the first major landmark was the enactment of our constitution itself, sir. It gives us the fundamental rights and especially takes care of the most vulnerable section of the society, sir. Uh, the scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, oh women, and uh, women, children, and so on, sir. Sir, uh, second social development would be in the year 1970-1975 when the UN report on women came and we had a lot of women movements in our country which led to enactment of women specific laws in our, in our country. So for example, the Dowry Prohibition Act and so on, sir, which is still continuing and the latest being the Prevention of Sexual Harassment Act which was enacted in 2013. Sir, all these acts have empowered women uh, and led to their social development, sir. Um, so the third uh, major development would be the creation of the commissions uh, for the backward classes. Sir. The National Commission for Backward Classes was constitutionally recognized in 2018. Sir. Uh, and so last would be the economically uh, weaker section reservation which was introduced in our country. It is a testament to the fact it recognizes that poverty is also a major problem in our country. And uh, uh, we, we have to work for those sections. What about the Panchayat Raj Act? Panchayat yes, sir, definitely, sir. <coughs> that is sir, a Panchayati, yes, sir. Panchayati Raj Act is a major development, landmark development. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, definitely, sir. The 73rd and the 74th Amendment Act give constitutional recognition to the rural and urban local bodies, sir. And not just that, it, it uh, gave recognition to women and vulnerable sections as well, sir. It gave them the position of leadership, sir, in the society. So it has led to their... But does it make any difference because uh, this uh, Pati Pradhan, the custom which has started after that, then the woman becomes the Sarpanch or a member. Though her husband goes to the meetings. So, but 
in view of this fact, whether there is a real em any empowerment of women? Sir, surely, uh, definitely, sir, this is a challenge that uh, uh, Sarpanch Pati culture does exist and it has been reported in various studies. Uh, but, sir, overall, I feel that Panchayati Raj system has definitely led to empowerment of women. Because, sir, it has been seen again in multiple studies that wherever women were named Sarpanch, uh, they invested more in the infrastructure meant for women and children. For example, they invested in schools, they invested in water harvesting structures, and so on, sir. Where, and where, it, is, where it is documented like this? What is the source of this information? Uh, sir, uh, if I, I don't remember the exact source, but I remember reading it in newspapers in the past year or so, sir. But I don't remember the exact source. Okay, good. Tell me, <clears throat> there is a concept called a situational relationship. We have a concept of marriage. We also have a concept of uh, live-in partnerships. We also then this uh, new concept of a uh, situational relationship uh, terminology in sociology has come up recently. Do you have any idea what it is? Sorry, sir, I don't know. Okay. Uh, tell me. In political economy. It is believed that uh, the poli polity or politics decides which kind of policy will be there. But do you think do you think that policy also decides what kind of politics it will be there? Clarify, are we talking about the relationship between politics and economy, sir? That if politics decide economics, politics and policies, it can be economic policy, social policy, any policy. Generally, politics, what is the kind of politics in a particular country, it decides what kind of policies will be made there. Mm -hmm. So, whether reverse is also true, some policies also have a power to change the politics. Yes, sir. It is it is true both ways, sir. Uh, sir, for example, in if the politics is demo democracy based, uh, we have uh, the policies are based on a multi stakeholder discussion. They take in account of all the sections of the society, sir, as has been the case in India, sir. At the same time, sir, uh, the kind of policies that have been going on in the country also decide the politics. For example, sir. Uh, Sir, the policies uh, like the 1991 liberalization and uh, the LPG policy of 1991 in our country has also influenced the politics post uh, 1990s in our country as well, sir. Uh, a, a, lot, a lot of politics is focused, it has, it has become more broad based. Okay, okay, focused. okay. Now I'll give you a small situation and yes, you answer sir. the question based on that situation. Yes. The situation is a business, you are a business analyst. So, now you assume you are a business entrepreneur. Yes. And uh, you are producing some goods. You want to sell them. And you engage somebody, some agency or some other firm to provide you customers. That is marketing part of it. And agreement says that, you have a small agreement which says that they will provide you the customers. You will pay some fees with a condition that they will not provide customers to your competitors. Okay, this much only. Now your business goes on very well, but after some time you come to know that they have started providing to uh, customers to your competitors also. However, they are meeting your requirement, they are providing you as many as you want. What will, what will you do? Sir, I will immediately terminate the contact contract with the uh, agency, sir. Uh, termination, me, termination of the contract, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Ayushi. Yes, sir. I see from your DAF that you have studied Sanskrit in school up to class 10. 
sir. Do you remember any Sanskrit? Can you recite a shlok for me? Sorry, sir, I don't remember much. I I remember Vasudev Kutumbakam, sir. This that this line. one line, only one line you remember, Vasudev Kutumbakam. Yes. Okay, sir. now tell me, as regards Vasudev Kutumbakam, some examples where India has implemented this in its foreign policy. So the first one would be sir vaccine metri okay. sir we have uh, sir second would be the humanitarian and uh, disaster relief assistance which have been which we have been providing to different countries for example recently turkey sir uh, sir another one would be the peacekeeping efforts which india is taking in different war torn affected countries sir all right now as regards the relief assistance to turkey yes, what sir. was the name of this relief operation that we gave operation dost it's yes. called operation dost yes now recently our media has uh, written a lot on the theme on the subject that turkey has backstabbed india why what happened Sir, uh, it is said that uh, Turkey, uh, being a part of OIC or uh, Organization of Islamic Countries, along with Pakistan, raises the Kashmir issue multiple times. And we have always maintained the position that Kashmir has and always will be an integral part of our country, sir. Sir, I, I think due to this reason, the media has been right. So, as you said, it's been a part of OIC, so it's always been raising. So, why is our media now saying that Turkey has backstabbed India? What what precisely happened uh, in March, for instance, after we gave the relief assistance to Turkey? Did Turkey say anything after that? You didn't sorry, follow. Sorry. You didn't follow. All right. Now, uh, do you read the newspapers? Yes, sir. Can you tell me three important? news items from today's papers which pertain to international affairs uh, sir one is that french president emmanuel macron uh, went to china yes. and uh, met the president xi jinping um, sir another is about the indictment of the ex us president donald trump which is currently going on yes uh, in the us um, and so there is an ongoing news about the Russia-Ukraine war, which keeps on coming every day. So what is the news that you've re read today about the Russia-Ukraine war? Um, sorry, sir, I don't, uh, you don't remember. remember. All right, okay. Thing. Now tell me, what is BIMPSTEC? Uh, sir, BIMPSTEC is a group of uh, countries around the Bay of Bengal, including India. And it includes uh, the littoral states around the Bay of Bengal as well as the Southeast uh, Asian nations. Uh, it has been uh, formed. No, hold on, hold on. First of all, what is the full form of BIMSTEC? Uh, Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi Sectoral uh, and Technical and Economic Cooperation. Very good. So, and which countries are members? How many countries are members? How many? Sir, uh, I'm not sure, but I think it's seven. Well, seven is correct. And which are those seven countries? Uh, sir, uh, Sri Lanka, India, uh, Nepal, Bhutan, uh, uh, Bangladesh, uh, Thailand, and men. Very good. Now, why is this organization important for India? <clears throat> Uh, sir, this organization is important for India uh, for multiple reasons, sir. Sir, first one is our neighborhood first policy, given that SARC mm -hmm. is almost non-functional due to Pakistan. Uh, so this organization can help us to engage with our neighborhood. Secondly, sir, this can help us to bring in more connectivity and uh, regional cooperation within the South Asia, not just within the South Asian region, sir, but also between South Asia and Southeast Asia, sir. All right. And sir... Yes, yes. Now, suppose you were in the Foreign Service and you were asked to choose the country where you would like to be posted first. In other words, choose your first posting wherever you want to go. Which country would you choose? 
normally of course the country you choose you never get it they'll send you the, to some opposite place but that's a separate matter what country would you choose sir i would choose china sir china okay now tell me some of the basic problems that we have with china in point form 1 2 3 three main problems the first one is the border issue which is currently going on sir okay uh, so second one would be the trade deficit which india has with china okay uh, uh, and sir third one is related to the cyber attacks which have been reported done by state and non state actors right. from china sir. okay now who's the foreign minister of china uh, sir chin wang sir beg your pardon uh, sir mr chin wang okay now Suppose you were traveling in China. Tell me five cities in China where you would like to go to. So the first one would be their capital, Beijing, sir. Okay. I want to understand their politics. Uh, so second would be their commercial capital, Shanghai. Okay. Uh, sir. Uh, sir, I would also like to visit Hong Kong. It is very much developed financially. Okay. So I want to see what exactly are they doing there. Um, so that's three you have named. Yes, sir. China is a huge country. There must be more yes. cities. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, though, uh, sir, I would also like to visit the Xinjiang region, sir, which is close to city. our country. City. Tell me the city where you have said the region. I want cities. Okay, let's move on. What is meant by China's string of pearls? sir uh, it means that it is trying to encircle india in the indian ocean region not just uh, not just india it's a whole system of maritime network uh, and from where does it start and where does it end in the east where does it start um Sir, I think it starts uh, somewhere around the first island chain in the uh, East China Sea, sir. Even more north, it starts in the Chinese mainland. And where does where is it supposed to extend to in the west? Sir, uh, close to the eastern uh, coast of Africa, sir. All right, near Djibouti. Now, Djibouti. you spoke about encirclement of India. Name some ports which China has developed. Which could have a security aspect as far as we are concerned. Sir, the first one is the Haman Tota port in uh, Sri Lanka, which has been leased uh, to China, sir. Uh, so that this it, it can have a serious security implications uh, for us because in the past we have seen uh, a Chinese a ship also docked there, which can use it for surveillance, sir. Uh, Sir, another as we discussed in Eastern Africa, sir, Djibouti. Well, it's uh, too far. That's very far. Encirclement of India, mainly around India. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, in in Gwadar, in as part of C, uh, China Pakistan Economic Corridor, sir, uh, China is also developing the Gwadar port. Okay. Uh, so, sir, that can also be so a challenge. So you've named Hamban Tota and you've named Gwadar. Yes, sir. Something else. What about Bangladesh? Is there any port in Bangladesh which has, which could have a security fallout? All right, let's move on. Chittagong has been developed by China, although it's commercial, but there is a military damage. My last question to you: There are a number of high-level visits to India which have taken place recently, since first March, for instance. Can you tell me who all have been the high-level visitors? So the recent one is the Bhutan King. All right, uh, and in March, uh, um, any prime ministers? Uh, yes, sir. <coughs> All right, let's talk about the King of Bhutan's visit. What are the important issues for us? The prime ministers who visited last month were the prime ministers of Japan, Australia, Italy, and the Chancellor of Germany. But we'll talk about the Bhutan King visit. Tell me, what are the important issues for us, when as regards this visit? 
सर भूटान इज अ नेबरहुड कंट्री फॉर अस विथ विच वी शेयर अ बॉर्डर सो सर द मेजर इशू इज द सिक्योरिटी इशू द दोखला ट्राई जंक्शन क्राइसिस विच वी हैड इन टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन विथ भूटान एंड करंटली भूटान एंड चाइना आर नेगोशिएटिंग अ बॉर्डर अग्रीमेंट सो सर दिस इज अ मेजर कंसर्न फॉर अस बिकॉज यू वॉन्ट टू रिजॉल्व दैट इशू ट्राई लेटरली एंड वी डू नॉट वॉन्ट टू गिव चाइना एंड अपर हैंड इन दिस Uh, sir, another would be the border issues which we have uh, with Bhutan. The, it's an open border, and there are cases of smuggling, uh, which happens, sir. Uh, sir, the, this this is a major issue, sir. And the, as far as I know, sir, in our neighborhood, Bhutan remains the only country which has not yet accepted the uh, BRI project of China, sir. So, sir, it it also remains. So, how is that a problem? Yes, sir. I'm sir, asking that, you, that... what are the problems? You are mentioning what is not a problem. So yes, so that is a that is a good thing which is happening, sir. Okay. But it is also it also reminds us that we have to remain very uh, careful with Bhutan, so that. By it, the way, what is the does... name of the king of Bhutan? Sir Jigme Kisar Namgyal Wangchuk. Sir. Very good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Miss Ayushi. Yes, sir. You have interest in stage play, street play. Yes. What is the difference between the two? Uh, sir, there are uh, a number of differences. Sir, in terms of the perspective of the artist, uh, in street play we do raw acting. We the core is the purpose and the issue which we want to highlight, and which is done uh, via various characters and scenes and the flow. Uh, sir, while on the other hand, in stage play, purpose is not the core, but the story is the core, uh, which we want to display via different <coughs> characterizations. There is more nuanced acting, and we develop more characterizations, sir. while on the other hand from the perspective of audience sir uh, in street play uh, the audience surrounds uh, the artist from all the sides and they do not have to pay anything and they directly engage with the actor sir sir while the on the other hand in stage play it is usually seen that the stage is highly uh, stage is a little bit elevated and the audience are seated in the seats and which is usually uh, paid sir. all right now <clears throat> Tell me some women leaders you have admired. Uh, sir, I admire Savitri Bai Phule a lot, sir. Hmm. Uh, in those times, considering her situation, she worked on the most vulnerable section, lower caste women in our society long back, and she created a movement despite uh, everyone in the society not being supportive to her, except her husband, sir. So, sir, I admire. Someone her, from her. your sector where you are working, from your corporate sector. Uh, sir, corporate sector, sir, Miss Indra Anui, uh, uh, who was the ex uh, CEO of PepsiCo, sir. Uh, she is okay. also currently. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, what is her contribution? Remarkable contribution that you can point out to. Sir, one thing <coughs> which I uh, which I think is remarkable about her, sir, sir, is she is bringing to the forefront the talks about work-life balance, which and the dual role which women have to fulfil, especially, sir, and the challenges which women leaders uh, mostly face. For example, sir, she talked about how uh, she had to fulfil her domestic and domestic responsibilities. All right, that is okay. But something as her leader of PepsiCo, <coughs> can you point out some? facts and figures which shows that this was her remarkable performance uh, sir uh, as far as i know during her tenure pepsico expanded a lot uh, geographically and the product and product wise as uh, well sir. any facts uh, figures do you have anything uh, okay sorry sir now you know world bank uh, recently reduced india's gdp growth can you tell us something about it Yes, sir. Uh, the World Bank has projected uh, that for the uh, for FI 2023 and 2024, uh, it will be around 6.3 percent, which is a 0.7 percent reduction from its earlier estimate, sir. And the reasons cited are the uh, global challenges, geopolitical challenges, higher interest rates, uh, tightening monetary policy across the globe and in India as well, sir. These reasons could potentially slow down our growth. All right. Now, last question I will ask you. Name some of the other uh, senior bankers from India who have been successful abroad. International bankers.
Have you heard of name Ajay Banga? Yes, sir. I, I was thinking about him. Yes, okay. sir. He has Anyone been nominated. Else? Anyone else? Um, A lady. Have you heard of Geeta Gopinath? Yes, sir. Who is she? Uh, she so she is currently the chief economist of IMF. Is she uh, the chief economist or she is the vice president of IMF? Sorry, sir. I am not sure. The okay. last I read, I remembered. <clears throat> so you tell me. You know. Indians go abroad and they have become so successful. Give me three main reason why they have become so successful. Sir, uh, sir, I think it is a positive nature of our education system, which is considered much more rigorous and much more competitive and hardworking as compared to the global standards. So that that gives Indian CEOs and H. Okay, that's one. One competence. education. Yes, sir. Um, sir, um, overall uh, in the in the business sector, sir, uh, there is a lot of competition and there is very uh, there is a positive acceptance of people from diverse backgrounds, uh, sir. So I think that kind of acceptance has also helped uh, Indians to achieve. Uh, uh, a lot in the business sector, sir. Um, and sir, uh, so these two are the main reasons. All right. For that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.